Hi there, Mark here. Got Rob on the camera. Hi, yeah. All right, guys. Today I'm going to be building my Team Repsol Mitsubishi Rally Art Racing Lancer DF01 rally car. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is um, build the differential. It says build the rear differential first. Step two. Yeah, we're not doing one. That's just charging the battery. So I won't worry about that. But as soon as we're doing this differential and we look at step 11, it's exactly the same. I've decided I'm going to build both the differentials at the same time, get those out of the way. So here are the parts for the two. You got them, Rob? Yep. And then there's the gears and the bevel gears in there. Let's get building. What we'll probably do is. Um, Fast forward a lot of this, you don't want to see me doing all the screws up. Get the parts for the first one. I'm using my good old little tub of lithium moly grease, which is I prefer this to the, the Tammy stuff for general greasing anyway. Two diffs are built up now. Filled them up with grease, you probably saw, put plenty in there, so I don't think you can have too much. Um, next step is step three, you're going to fit the one of the differentials into B7, um, grease up the outside, put in my lovely metal bearings because I can't stand those bushes as you know, and screw the back on with the four three mil screws. So there's a different place with the, the metal bearings. You can see I've just put a little bit of grease on the mating surfaces there just to hopefully to stop uh, any fine dust getting into the housing. So on this goes. And we'll just put the screws in. Step four, um, this is fitting the pinion to the motor and the motor plate to the motor. Um, you can see I'm not using the standard um, motor that comes with the kit. This is an old um, Fireball 21 double turn that I used to have in my Neo Scorcher and also there's a 17 tooth pinion from the Neo Scorcher. Um, it's a steel one so I'm going to put this one in. The standard is a 16 um, but I think this should work okay with this motor. If it doesn't, I can always change it, but we'll give it a go. And the fact that it's steel means this should, uh, shouldn't should wear out so quick. So I've got the spacer in place, which is B3, I think. Just yep. give this a nice nip up. Again, I'm not using any thread lock on this. No, I've never done it either. And it doesn't actually tell you to do that in the no. instructions. I've not had one come loose, so. Um, this motor isn't quite um, got the same size neck on it there, whatever you call it, to uh, to hold the plate. So I'm gonna have to fiddle about with this to fit now um, B2. So I've got the screws in the right place in the 17 holes. I'm just gonna attach this now. Step five, we're gonna fit the motor now into the housing. Um, if you note there, this little lug needs to point down, it says no direction. So make sure that points down, there's the two holes there that the motor mount goes into. Okay, then we're just gonna put two, three more screws with a washer into these two holes here. Step six, we've got the spur gear, the idler gear and the prop joint. We're going to do is just put those onto the respective um, axles there. I've got my two 1150 metal bearings to replace the plastic ones and the four 850s. So it's just a matter basically of getting these, putting the bearings in. I don't need the grease because we've got the bearings and just putting it all together. So I'll just do that now.
And step seven is just dropping those gears we've just put onto the shafts into um, the case. So the two are just dropped in there. Fit the prop joint in there. And then we need to fit on the cover, which is B6. So again, with the right way around, I'm just going to put some grease around there just to seal it and then that attaches with these three demo screws. Step 8 is fitting the rear damper stay um, or shock tower as we might call it. Uh, it also holds the top two suspension arms which are um, D10 and they go through with a, a step screw through that mount a washer and then screw straight into that there and then that fits onto this mount there with again three mil screws three mil by ten I should say And then we're going to fit the uh, output shafts. They call them gearbox joints, but I call it an output shaft. Um, just remember to get your little O-ring, little black O-ring. Fit it in there first. Your dog bone and just push it in. It should stay in place because it's quite a tight, tight fit. So one in each. And then we're just going to grease those up, slip them into differential. Step 9, it's so his rear axles but okay the rear axles are involved in this step but basically it's the what we call Rob the uh, lower wishbones in it. It is yeah. I don't know why they come in two halves but anyway make sure you line up the two bits of plastic you know you've got it the right way around. Get your 10mm long screw, drop it in there. Just build up these two that one on that one. So you see I cheated a bit there, on step 10 I've just um, fitted the first bit which is putting the lower arms on with the two long screw pins they call them. Don't particularly like those but hey that's what the kit comes with. So we're just going to put the drive shafts in, again I'm not going to grease them because I'm going to run it off road and that will soon turn into a nice grinding paste and hold all the dirt in there so place that in like so, get your step screw and your washer, put the washer between the two surfaces and just screw that in there and that will be the end of step 10 when I've done exactly the same for the other side. So that's the rear suspension done. Step 12, we're going to put the, um, the diff into the front gearbox housing. So two metal bearings in first. I've dropped in the diff, put a bit of a grease on it. Make sure that the, the flat part of the gear there is on the left, as it shows in the diagram. And then all we need is um, part A3 and that just clips on there. As you can see, it pushes down on the bearings, holds the bearings in place, and I'll just put the four screws in there, and that's step 12 completed. Steps 13 and 14, um, this is the counter gear um, for driving the front gearbox, so I've got to make that up. I've got this shaft, which is MA14. I've put on the circlip there. It goes on the end with the flat. What I need to do is put G1, 
the bevel onto there, which is keyed, so it can only go on one way. Push it right on, and on the end of that, one of the smaller 850 bearings, like so. On the other side, we've got the 1150 bearing. And then we just push on D14, which is the little cover that holds the, um, the shaft in place. There we go. So that's that bit done there. We've got the, I think this is the counter gear, isn't it, Rob? Could be. I think so. I'm not sure what they call it. Second idler gear. Yeah, there's an idler and a bevel on that. So this is your, your straight bar with a little groove in the middle. Don't know why the groove's there, but hey. Um, we put on uh, 1150s on the one end and an 850 into the other end. And then put on the cap or the cover, which is the A2. And that's just three screws. And then that's the front gearbox. Set 15 is the front damper stay or shock tower as we call them. Um, make sure you've got this the right way around. It's going to go with the uh, these protrusions pointing towards yourself, as, like so. We're going to fit the top suspension arms on there through this hole. So get your step screw. Make sure you put a washer on the back. And then attach the top arm like so, with a thicker bit on the shock tower. So this is now fitted with these two screws, the 3mm 3B10s through the top there. So I'll just screw those in and then don't forget grease up uh, your output shafts and pop those into place. Okay, so that's it for part one of uh, a Lancer uh, chassis build. So hopefully see you in part two, where we'll finish the car. Thanks for watching. Bye.